All right, well, welcome everyone to this week's edition of our bi-weekly webinar where we update you on what is on the top of our minds and things you should pay attention to, probably more importantly, the things you should not. Well, it's finally summer. We've had a few wonderful, beautiful days. Uh, it's been warm. No rain here in Wisconsin, which is fine. Um, there's a weather system moving in from the west. I'm just messing with you. Um, I just wanted to make sure that you guys are paying attention and did have the right webinar. So this is very interesting right now watching what's going on with uh, the markets. If you look at most people's expectations over the past five or six weeks, they had none. They talked a lot about recession, all sorts of different items going on. What's actually occurred instead is we've seen a pretty robust movement in some of the small cap and some of the speculative names. They really got beaten up down to last year in 2022. So looking at the items today, they still exist, but it's amazing when sentiment turns from extreme fear and pessimism to maybe, I don't want to call it optimism, but actually turns toward optimism, what can happen and how quickly it can happen in the markets. There's also, I was talking with a gentleman who uh, from fiduciary management, one of the huge mutual fund companies out there based in uh, Milwaukee yesterday. And the conversations were about small cap mean reversion and also about international and foreign stocks, including emerging markets, and how just their mean reversion and not having a currency headwind should offer some incredible returns or could offer some incredible returns over the next three to five years in those categories as well. But, you know, I think the same things we have always uh, for concerns the, this time of year is that people used to use the old adage, sell in May and go away, um, all these weird kind of things, and they work until they don't. Um, they're always a nice adage. I think it's just a great saying uh, a lot of people have. But in this case, it wasn't a big item as well. Uh, today in my go big, I like to go big. Let me uh, kind of take a step back, if you will. We had a wonderful, wonderful congregation over the last uh, couple of weeks in uh, Adirondacks in New York. And so that's the mountains in New York. We were there before all the rain um, and the big flooding that they had, but we were there for my grand for my father-in-law's 90th birthday. We got to celebrate that with 30 of the Jackson family and just had an absolute wonderful time. And the last two three weeks, three weeks have been a lot of gatherings of different people, friends, clients, um, today's birthday club as well. Uh, we're super excited. It energizes me and I just love seeing people. More importantly, I love seeing the team grow. And I got to hold about a two week old baby for about a half an hour who fell asleep in my arms last week, which you guys might get to know or see more of as she grows up here. Uh, you probably know who that is, but I'll leave that to, to later for him to show you all. But at any rate, um, that's my go big for today. There's a whole bunch more, but I'll just start with that. Um, how about Ken? How about yours? Yeah, thank you, Chris. Good to be here with you all on the Zoom call today. And uh, trying to help other people. So my neighbors had to be uh, rushed to the hospital unexpectedly the other nights. Which, which happened to be Sunday nights. And so uh, we were able to step in. They're a Spanish speaking couple. So my wife, Sarah, speaks fluent Spanish, was able there to help some of the uh, EMT crew kind of like work through the situation. Uh, so that was actually really nice that Sarah was able to do that. And then, uh, so the husband and wife had to go to the hospital. We had their three kids come over to our house and stayed for about a day and a half, slept overnight. So uh, we had seven children in our house at one time. So now, now I know the reason why we stopped at four children. Um, so, <laughs> but, but the whole point of it is, is we're grateful for the opportunity to step in and help some of our neighbors that needed the help when they needed it the most. So. Thank you very much, Ken. Thank you very much, Ken. And the big, the biggest news I think we all know about is um, obviously Wimbledon and everybody knowing that uh, if you haven't recorded it, please cover your ears right now if you still haven't watched it but Alcaraz beat Djokovic which to many of the younger generation was a uh, all right finally it's not one of those old guys winning all the time you know I kind of like the old guys but I like to see the new guys ushered in so it was kind of a big, big one and I know that there's somebody who's on this call a little bit later who's from Britain who might have some interest in Wimbledon who might have had a birthday over the weekend um, but at any rate I'll, I'll leave it at that <laughs> how about Zach how about your go big yeah thank you Chris um, like you mentioned in the beginning just Super grateful and, and super humbled by the different events that we've had recently. Last weekend was probably one of the, the most fun uh, two days that I've ever really had. And like you said, Chris, it just really gives me energy. And uh, it's just an honor to, to serve the people and be on this journey with, with each of you. It's um, saying work or, or job or, or work event doesn't even sound right as it comes out because it's not what we feel or what I feel. And um, you know, Chris has mentioned many times passion or vocation. And that's that aligns perfectly. So it was just a incredible weekend just to reflect on on how blessed we really are to do what we do for you. Awesome. Thank you very much. How about uh, Michael? Thanks, Chris. Uh, I'm gonna keep it pretty high level today. I'm really grateful for YouTube. 
Um, YouTube has taught me so many random little things over the last 10 years of my life. It's ridiculous, whether it was, you know, how to get that tie tied for my first interview out of college or, you know, most recently I've been trying to pick up the game of golf and I've been spending a little bit too much time watching instructional videos on how to get that swing right. Um, so I, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for the creators out there who take the time to try to teach somebody to someone who, uh, who's looking for that outlet. Awesome. Thank you very much. How about Lisa? I know you're on there as well. Why don't you give us your copy, please? Yes. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm very happy to be here. Yeah, so um, it's nice to get on here every now and then. Um, my go big was I had a um, birthday this last week. I wasn't gathering on the green with the rest of the team, so I missed that. But um, had a big birthday. It was kind of um, a little, a little bit unusual because I turned 54, and I think I mentioned it to the team earlier that I moved here when I was 27. So 27 and 27, 54. Um, yeah, we're good at math at this company, so yeah, we know that. <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of a strange feeling to know that I've lived as long in America as I have in England. So it's definitely an unusual feeling. I'm grateful to have lived in two countries that are completely different, but kind of the same. So just grateful for that and grateful for having another birthday, another another year around the sun. So always awesome. grateful for that. Thank you. Thank you very much. I still haven't named Ashley's segment coming up here. What I'm going to have her do is her go big. She's going to do something for the savers and something for the spenders. Uh, maybe I'm just going to call it that. It's a segment for the savers and the spenders. Uh, I'm just messing with you. Well, we'll come up with something good for it, Ashley. Ashley's, uh, Ashley's anecdotes. Maybe that's a good one. We'll see. But at any rate, uh, Ashley, why don't you give us your go big before you uh, give us a few enlightening tips on saving and also how we might spend in an enjoyable way? Absolutely. Well, I'm actually going to continue off of some people's comments about the weekend. Uh, we are coming off of Gathering on the Green. So thank you to everyone who came out and saw us and hopefully enjoyed some music with us. But uh, during a lot of my conversations with our guests, um, they talked about their travel and what they've been up to. So I'm going to go right into my segment, which is actually themed, of course, in the travel department. So when is a good time to splurge in all things travel. So personally, I kind of came up with a couple of these things along with some of our clients input from over the weekend. Direct flights. Travel kind of a nightmare if you've been in an airport, if you've had a canceled flight, if you've had a delayed flight. Sometimes it's just nice to get spend that extra money, get there quickly and enjoy your time while you're there with a little bit of extra time instead of being in an airport so much. Definitely splurge on comfortable shoes. You're going to be you're going to be walking. You're going to be exploring. You're going to be hiking. So comfortable shoes and just it's a good investment. A waterproof jacket or a coat. Again, you don't want to miss that photo op or possible tour just because of a little rain. Definitely splurge on that jacket and you'll use it for years to come. TSA pre-check. And I actually want to hint back to a previous segment. A lot of your credit cards, if you pay a certain fee especially American Express, you actually get reimbursed for TSA pre-check. And again, that TSA pre-check is good for five years. So definitely worth something or spend some spending time looking into it and going down to get TSA pre-check. Travel adapters. If you're traveling to different countries, it's a good idea to invest in a good quality travel adapter. It will save you time, energy, and efforts um, when you get to your destination. Tours and experiences. I mean, I think I speak for our entire team and every traveler. It's definitely worth some time. Number one, spending some time looking at tours that you may want to participate in, and then definitely spending the money on the tours. You just can't see some of the things unless you're on a tour or have someone there that can teach you about um, what you're looking at. Local food and drinks, definitely a splurge worthy thing. You may never get back to an area. So definitely seek out the locals and enjoy some cuisine and drinks that you would not otherwise do so. And that's all I have for this session. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Ashley. I appreciate that. Um, I think it's awesome to see that. I think the direct flights, I've heard a lot lately of people who have been delayed or had nightmare travel situations because of connections and missed connections and late connections. And uh, I think a long time ago, I, we've talked about this as well. If you really need to get somewhere, like drive to Chicago and fly direct. 
So that's at least what we do here in Milwaukee. So I appreciate those ideas as well, because once you get there, if you're all frustrated, it kind of takes you a day or two to unwind. Um, thank you very much. I appreciate that. So why don't we go to um, Mike's minute and I'm going to start timing you, Mike, right now. Go. Perfect. Perfect. And it's actually funny that you bring up the, uh, the direct flight thing. Um, I've uh, been mistaken for Zach a few times in the recent days and people have asked me how my run was. And I tell them the last time I ran was through the Detroit airport to try to catch my, uh, my connection. Uh, but anyways, uh, some of the things that we're hearing, we're having a lot of conversations with our partners, with the different representatives for the financial institutions that we choose to carry our clients hard earned money through retirement. And some of the things that we're having conversations about, and it's still a hot topic, is all of the stimulus, time to money supply, all of that that's out there that's way, making its way through the economy and eventually will come to a head and kind of level out from spending. And that's kind of that big moment that people are looking at now as to being the key to figuring out whether we're going to be in a recession or not. It's very interesting the way it's been described. Ken had a very good analogy earlier as we were speaking on it. I heard of it as in when you think of a snake and when a snake eats something, you can kind of see it move through its system. So right now, this is a lump moving through the economy system. And as it's being digested, it's going to work itself out. And then we'll have a little bit more clarity on what the economy is going to look like going forward. So those are kind of the hot topics conversation. Thank you, Chris. Uh, that was uh, 58 seconds. Keep going. No, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> I'm just messing. With Mike, thank you very much. I appreciate that. You know, it's interesting. There's an awful lot going on. If you look at this, there's some uh, incredible things the Fed is talking about. If you really want to get into the detail, um, if you're really quite sleep deprived or you're sleep deprived, you need to fall asleep. It's a great thing to read some of the minutes of the Fed as well. Uh, some of the details of them are just fascinating when they go back and forth. But again, a lot of it's context for geeks like us, but it's quite funny as you go through a lot of, a lot of uh, our partners as well are giving a lot of great information on a historical basis. They know not to come to us with timely, timely issues, which are just right for the now. We're continuing to look at the time list basis. Now, we have our annual, uh, our biannual, mid-year letter, if you will, coming out soon. I'll read a couple excerpt, excerpts to you as well on, um, and we'll talk a bit about that. But I think it's interesting to see a few things before I even hop to, to Zach and looking at what's going on. But the U.S. jobs market was super, super hot. We've seen um, earnings from Wall Street very, very hot in several sectors as well. European inflation do is down. Oil is down. Gold is up 1%, bleeping, believe, people, with people believing that interest rate hikes are near the end. Um, it's really interesting to watch some of the different dynamics there, but long-term, again, are companies making the adjustments they need to make during both inflationary and rough, potentially recessionary times? So far, the answer is yes. Strong companies who are very nimble making decisions that are better for both shareholders um, and also for the people who use their products are, are happening. So uh, with that, why don't I pass it over to Zach? Zach, uh, I just want to tell you in the past month, apparently, I have run uh, four or five marathons. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. I've walked five marathons according to my whoop strap. So just so you know, I'm getting close to 100 miles of walking in the month. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud of you. That's awesome. It's a great accomplishment. Now you're going to have to add like a 45 pound pack uh, oh. while you do it or something. So. Uh, I don't know about that. We'll see. <laughs> Maybe the golf bag is around 40 pounds or 30 pounds. Add some more balls in it. Yeah, I'll, I'll look for it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh We'll just give a, a high level overview of, of different things that we're seeing. Like we always go through just year to date returns of the different indices. Uh, the Dow Jones up about 3.8% on the year. Everyone across the board is up two to 5% over the last two weeks only. So the S&P 500 is a little over eight and a half, 18 and a half percent positive on the year and only about 5% off of January of 2022 highs. Last webinar, uh, we mentioned it, but it's worth mentioning again, Mike, found an extremely interesting fact that seven companies of the S&P 500 around two weeks ago, three weeks ago, accounted for 100% of the S&P 500 return for the year. So 493 companies actually had a negative 0.25% average return out of that. So incredibly interesting. And also the other thing as we go through is anyone that made a bet, assuming that value was going to be better than growth again this year is not very happy about it. So that's the amazing thing about rebalancing and what we do here is that value did better than growth last year. We do a rebalance at any time during the year last year, sold off of value, bought more of growth. Growth is far exceeding value in all indices, all categories this year. So the NASDAQ, which is 50% weighted towards technology is up 37% on the year. 
the international sector about 10 and a half percent positive emerging markets 6.5 percent positive the russell 2000 this is the most interesting one over the last two weeks is up over 12 percent and really uh, almost six percent in the last two to three three weeks in the small cap space and the, we're seeing the disparity between growth and value the other way last year it was value like i just mentioned but growth on the one year return so not calendar year not starting of this year but one year looking back 12 months growth is actually up 15 percent now and value is 3.56 so that's why we own both we never guess or assume which which asset class which growth or value is going to do better we own both we rebalance and continue to over time which is just it's just amazing to see it work out that way and why it's a timeless piece of ours each and every year that chris i'll hand it back to you Thank you very much, Zach. I appreciate Zach's facts. That's amazing. Seven companies have derived all the return for the S&P for the year sometime last week. That's amazing. So there's 493 worthless companies and seven great companies. Why don't, why don't we just own them? <laughs> Obviously, that's not diversification as we go through. But thank you very much, Zach. I appreciate that. Uh, what's interesting, though, I, you probably don't know this fact about Ken, but... Um, he applied once for a job at a sunscreen factory and he didn't get it. And then I told him he should reapply. Actually, that's kind of funny. He also, do you, with another good one is, what do you call a dad joke that is the subject of your boy? It's the sunburn. Those are two good ones. I like those as well. And speaking of, you know, summer, I have one more. Um, what does a pig say when it's really warm outside? I'm bacon. Anyway, so before we do that, I want to send these over to Ken. Good ones for your little, little kids. I think those are great. Sometimes good for your friends when they come back, you know, a day later, go, I finally get that joke, um, which we have some friends who do that. With that, Ken, um, what's going on? What do we need to know about planning in this environment? I appreciate that, Chris. Good thing I reapplied here at Gentian. The first time it didn't work out. So, <laughs> so, so I'm glad I reapplied. No, I'm just, just joking around. Have a little fun here. So, uh, so on the planning side, a couple, a couple nuggets here, and then I'm going to get into a topic, if you will. Uh, Social Security is being talked about. You know, what's going to be the projection? What's going to be the increase, if anything, next year? Right now, the, the pundits are saying around 3% is going to be the projection. Again, this is simply just a hearsay at this point in time. The actual number comes out in October of every year for what we're going to see as far as an increase on Social Security for the following year, but right around 3%, which is much different than 8.7% increase in this year for 2023, which was the largest and biggest raise in nearly 40 years. So that's going to be a little bit of a change uh, there coming, if those people that are speculating are correct on that. So when it comes to planning, this one is Secure Act 2.0. This is for our, our still our earners and our savers that are out there, not our retirees necessarily right now, but those clients that are still working, uh, age 50 and older, who make more than $145,000 a year. There is something called the catch-up provision. I think we know that piece. There, the, the little catch is, is that all of the catch-up provisions that you're allowed to do inside your 401k, say, have to go into the Roth portion. And so that is a change that's coming in 2024. And we're only, what, five, five or six months away from this being a reality of how this is actually going to play out in some 401k plans. And that will be part of our planning conversations for our working clients at this point in time. When you, when you look at some of the ideas for the retirees, uh, cash has always been, a, uh, not always, but cash has been a conversation uh, probably in the last year or so about making sure that we er we're earning cash. Uh, earning interest on our cash that we have that's in, in a slush fund, emergency fund, something that's for a rainy day, if you will, making sure it's earning like around 5% is the going rate right now. So just keep that in mind as well. The other topic is family wealth planning. This one is, this one has a lot of pieces to it. And so there's a lot of variables that go into family wealth planning. Yes, taxes are part of it. The tax program we have, the tax system we have right now actually sunsets at the end of 2025. So we have 2023 here, 24 and 25. We have three more years before what's in place right now with the bigger standard deduction, the different tax brackets, that's actually going to sunset at the end of 2025. So there is some good planning to be done in the next three years from a family wealth planning standpoint. You know, our retirees that are comfortable with their, their income, they're comfortable with their lifestyle, 
the, you know, it becomes a little bit more routine. The spending is, is a little bit known year after year. Yeah, there's some spikes with new cars and things like that. We're planning for that with you. But those who are kind of in a groove, if you will, understand that there, there might be some money left over. If there's money left over that's unspent in, in your retirements, you know, talk about, you know, gifting now versus gifting later. You know, see, seeing some of these monies uh, and experiencing with your family and friends, however you're gifting, together while, while, while we're here together versus later, if you will. That's always a piece that we talk about as well. Um, you know, how are the kids doing financially? You know, that's a, that, that's a big, big factor in, you know, where tax brackets are today, where is income today versus who's going to receive the money potentially. Um, what about the equity in your home? You know, a lot of you have a lot of equity in your home that's there. Houses are paid off typically. And so you see a, a good chunk of equity there, you know, that plays into where are we going to live five years from now? Where do we want to live five years from now? Where are we going to want to live? Ten? So there's so many variables in this, but these are the conversations that if we start thinking of these questions, we can we can get to a solution that makes sense for you and your family uh, that, that you want to accomplish. So that's family wealth planning, more questions and answers on, on family wealth planning. But once we know your direction, we can help you guide you financially and make those great decisions that you want to make. With that being said, I'm going to hand it back over to Chris. Thank you, Ken. Yeah, family wealth distribution planning has been an item we really didn't pen as a name for the until the last four or five years as we realized that people aren't going to need everything that they have. They want to do something where they can actually give properly and also have their uh, you know children receive properly as well. So thank you, Ken, for keeping us up on that. That. I think family wealth distribution planning is something that a like retirement was 30 years ago wasn't talked much about, but will be more and more and more as we go forward. So I want to thank you for for keeping us uh, and keeping our attention on that as well. So I want to bring up something here uh, before I, I head over to um, Lisa and what's super important to pay attention to here at Gentian. But in ending in this, it's interesting that as you looked Four months ago, three months ago, people really thought that the end of the world was coming when it came to almost everything. October last year, we had some of the largest numbers in fear we had had in history for investors, period. That's larger than when seven of the top 10 financial institutions in America went under or were sold because they were insolvent. Yes, that's larger than that. So my good friend Nick Murray penned something recently, which you'll see coming up in the client's corner, but it's the end of the world has been inexplicably postponed again. It's hilarious because, I mean, if you've looked at this, I've observed that basically people who look at a crisis and say, this too shall pass, have historically been way more right than those who say, this time it's different. You've heard us say that for probably 25 years, but those who say, oh, this time it's different. And you've got a lot of friends who'll say that. Most people do. But this too shall pass has won in most cases. I think I talked to somebody recently who was a, or read a book by somebody recently, and they said, America will muddle through just about anything. Matter of fact, most of the world will muddle through just about anything. Nothing has caused the end of the world. With all that saying, there has been a super coronal mass ejection, actually, that may cause both poles to lose radio connectivity for a few days coming, which also may be something coming up here in the next few days where you could see northern lights across the whole United States. I know that was a rabbit hole. I went from one thing to another. But I'm giving you ideas here that will that pass? Will that be something that we all need to be prepared for? Potentially. But this too shall pass as we get four or five days past it. So items that you'll see in the news are often quite sensational because they have to capture your attention. Oh my gosh, today was the single biggest day in the last three days. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. Matter of fact, today is the last day of the last two days. We'll never have it again. It's going to be gone after tomorrow. So you guys really better take advantage of it. Um, again, it's the words that you often get. But I think as you see a couple of things that, that have happened here, the Fed says it's not done tightening yet, but it's getting a lot closer. Inflation still has a long way to go to meet the Fed's 2%, which I think is really their target and goal, but it's moderated considerably. The earnings are down a little bit in the first half of this year, but again, less than consensus expected. So things aren't down as much. We've had a few companies that have had, well, they didn't go down as much as they thought, and they've had wonderful returns on the stocks after that's been reported. A 2024 earnings recovery of some substance is now being really probably gingerly forecast. You're starting to look at some of those ideas. The default that everybody talked about hasn't happened. Um, that's a, maybe a couple of banks had issues, but they were absorbed. The dollar is about where it was a year ago. No significant weakness just yet. 
And banking seems to have stabilized, no contagion fear anyway. So these are it's probably six or seven of the major pieces we've seen. I like to offer those in perspective because we don't on this webinar often talk a lot about the technicals. Mike may, you know, Zach may, you know, Ken may, but I want you to understand we're paying attention to them. We just don't want to emphasize them because if you do pay attention to media, which we hope none of you do other than this one, you're going to get plenty of this. You're going to get tons of this, you know, inexplicable, you know, blah, 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 this happening. This is going on. Carvana is going out of business. Nope, no, it's not. Um, AT&T is not doing well. Oh, wait, it is. Uh, you're going to get tons of this back and forth because they have to keep your attention, right? Our goal is to actually keep you informed and keep you calm so that you can execute your plan long term. Ours is not to talk about the timely. We'll talk about it to let you know that we know it. But why do we specifically not talk about the topics you're seeing all the time? I may bring them up once in a while. We may bring up a couple of items that might be of interest to you just so that you know we know them. But if they're not actionable, if there's nothing we need to do because of them, we're not going to bring them up. We don't want to raise that. We don't want to raise that to you to be able to see it. So, you know, sometimes people ask, why don't you get more technical in these? Because if you wanted us to be technical and teach you all of this, you'd probably want to just do this yourself. And I tell you what, after 30 years, I still count myself as a massive learner. There's so much to, so much to continue to learn about this. The one thing I do know for sure is human beings are consistently very predictable. For us to understand that in our group of 600 clients and just us and our team to understand that, we have a massive advantage because we have faith in the future, patience to get through things, and the discipline not to do anything silly about it. So faith, patience, and discipline will carry us through any of these inexplicable one-time items that we've seen. I want to make sure that you understand that's why we don't get into the detail um, of every single item that's going on in the news. So with that, what I'd like to do is the things you should pay attention to in the news are the happenings at Gentian, which Lisa is just about to explore with you. That's right. Yes. And these are definitely the ones that the details need to be um, mentioned. So my birthday lunch today at noon. Um, I'm excited about this one because obviously, like I said, I had a birthday at the weekend. So this is one for that I can enjoy too as a guest. Um, and also Michael B, um, who works here also, his birthday is Friday, July 21st. So he will be celebrating with me at the birthday luncheon today, along with the team. Um, and then on July the 26th, which is next Wednesday, we have our ladies and gentlemen. Um, and we are doing an RSVP still until July the 19th. So anyone can still sign up for that. It is in the happenings emails that go out. Um, it's going to be a fun little crafting um, event. So um, please sign up for that. And then our office hours on Monday, July the 31st, we will be closed for that day as we focus on getting better for you. Um, as always, we do every day, but this day we are actually doing some team events. Um, Wednesday, August the 23rd is our next birthday club, which is way out in August. And I don't even know whether I want to mention September, but we do have our shredding event in September on the 13th. Uh, shred event and eat outside day. So like I said, that's not until September. So I'm not going to focus on that. We're going to focus on July. So uh, look forward to seeing anyone who joins us and um, hopefully some women will sign up for that event. Thank you. Fantastic. And Lisa, I think you forgot to mention that the uh, <clears throat> one of the most important British events coming up is the, the Open Championship, which is coming up this week as well. I know that you <laughs> wanted to mention that right after Wimbledon. I, I know you just like to kind of keep that down, but the Open is happening. In, uh, I think it's yeah, I'm so yeah. excited for that. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Kind of like as excited as all the Royals seem to be to meet the players after Wimbledon. It's funny when they <laughs> the, the ball, the ball boys, you mean? <laughs> yes, it's so funny. Yes, yes, yes. And I wonder what words she says. It'd be funny if you had the captions of what she actually said mm -hmm. as you went through there. Uh, a couple of things I wanted to, to end with as well, or first thing I should say I want to end with this. What's interesting is one thing we do in order to gain perspective is not paying attention just to what's going on presently. So paying attention to what's going on at the time. And that's a lot what a lot of people do. They're really focused their whole lives. And you'll know these people as well. And it's many of us. We get really focused on what's myopically happening right now. Instead of paying out 
attention to really what's happening all the time in the bigger picture. For us to offer perspective, we like to pay attention to the bigger picture and say, how does this all fit in? And it's not such a big deal. And it can reduce the stress, anxiety, and also your desire to take some crazy action as well. So whenever you're thinking about what's happening right now, right now, oh my gosh, I should do something about it. Now, unless that is, obviously it's raining fire from the sky and you're standing outside. Those are things you should do something about right now. But if it's, or raining and you, you need an umbrella. But when it comes to these, the bigger picture items are what we like to pay attention to. And that's what we're here for. We're here to offer you perspective. We're here to offer you advice on things that will help you continue both with your plan, your family plan, and the long time horizon that you guys have as well. So with that here um, from Gentian, I want to tell you, thank you tremendously for the introductions you've had with us. Thank you tremendously for being who you are. We notice uh, and enjoy how much we in spend time, enjoy spending time with you every time we get together, be it gathering on the green, the birthday clubs, the shredding events, um, the, the the webinars, and in, not the webinars as much being the uh, um, the seminars that we do as well, and the timeless, timeless pieces. We, we probably had 40, 50, and I can just see the energy and I feel the energy that we have from those as well. So I just want to praise, thank you, and, and really you guys are fantastic. You're why we do what we do. And I want to make sure that you understand that. And from that today, I'd like to close from our galactic headquarters here in Mequon, Wisconsin. This is Gentian. We'd love to help you plan retirement, live in retirement, and then give what you have left away in the way you'd like to. So with that, plan it, live it, give it. Here from our Gentian team, we'd like to say thank you, and we'll see you in two weeks.